Hi, welcome back. It's Emily Kaplan, and Kristen Pelty with Making Math Make Sense. Today we are going to play one of my all-time favorite games because it works on multiplication fluency in a fun, engaging way. It's multiplication tic-tac-toe. We have this game with addition. My fourth graders, though, love the multiplication. They challenge me all the time playing this game, and I do not let them win on purpose. Let's play. All right, so for multiplication tic-tac-toe, you will see over here on the left-hand side, we have our player counters, yellow and red. I will be yellow, we'll have Emily be the red counters. Over here on the right-hand side, these are your game chips that you're going to be playing with. So these counters are actually opaque, meaning that you can see through them when you place them over top of these numbers down here at the bottom. So down here at the bottom, you have your factors, and you have to put your chips over two of those factors. So I went ahead, since I'm player one, um, and I put my chips over six and three. I now have to multiply my two factors to come up with my product. My product is 18, and now I'm going to use my yellow counter to put it over top of that number 18. The object of this game is just like tic-tac-toe. You're trying to get three in a row, either horizontally, vertically, or diagonally, before your partner. But instead of placing X's and O's, you are going to be placing your chips over top of your products. So my first chip went right here on 18. It's Emily's turn. And on her turn, she can only move one of these two counters down here. She can choose to move either the six or she can move the three. Now, if she wants to, she can take the six counter and she can put it over top of the three to double up on the three to do three groups of three. That's completely up to her, but she can only move one of them. I am going to have you move the blue chip to the five so that I have six times five is 30. Okay, so we'll put her red counter over here on top of 30. All right, on my turn, I am going to do move the six to the four. So I'm gonna do four groups of five, which is 20, and put my counter over top of 20. I am going to block Kristen. I'm gonna put the blue counter on top of the four. So I'm going to have four times four, and I'm going to get 16. So while that doesn't give me an offensive move, it gives me a defensive move. And I did not want to leave Kristen with the opportunity to do that play. Okay, which that really, and now I don't have any way to get to the 21 because again, I can only move one of these counters here. All right, so I am going to move, knowing I have to use the four, I'm gonna use the, move the other four over to three, and I'm going to do three groups of four, which is 12. All right, so I need to think this through because I want to block Kirsten at six or 28. If I do six, that would move the blue chip to two, and she'd be left with a two and a three, neither one of which are factors of 28 that she can use on the board because two needs 14 and 14 is not an option. But if I moved the green to seven, that would leave, I'd get her at 28, but that'd leave her with a three that she could do the six. I'm gonna move the blue to two and block you with a product of six. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to move the blue down here to seven, and I'm going to do seven groups of three, which is 21, which gives me tic-tac-toe right there. I was hoping she didn't see that, so I didn't say it out loud. <laughs> so when you're moving those chips at the bottom, you wanna try to not leave your opponent with factors of a number that they need. So you're constantly thinking, what all the plays can I do? What play do they need and what factors do they need to make that play? So you're thinking of multiple multiplication problems in each play that you're taking. And again, I walk through this game with my class before I just send them off to play it. And I walk through all of that thinking as I am playing the game against them. And then once they've played the game, come back together and talk about what strategies did they use? What did they use to help them win? What did they use to help them block their partner? And also find out, did it make, did it help to either go first or to go second? 
Yep. And when if were my you kids... on the offensive more, when were you on the defensive more and why? So those are great questions to have, not only with your students at school, but if you're at home playing this game with your kids as well. Enjoy my multiplication, tic-tac-toe. So... I'm sorry? No, I was going to say my kids aren't so fluid with their um, multiplication facts. I definitely allow them to use that multiplication chart to help them with this game. Because this game isn't do you know it or not know it. This game is strategy and mm -hmm. what are the factors of numbers that you or your opponent need. So don't be afraid to let them use that tool of the multiplication chart to help them play this game. Absolutely. Remember, it's always best to look up a fact a thousand times and get it right every time rather than incorrectly guess it once. All right, on that note, if you have younger children, we do have the addition tic-tac-toe version. So um, you can check out the addition tic-tac-toe version for your younger kids who are working on their addition facts.